Hello, John Baker here. I'm an independent Rotax maintenance technician. My number is 3852. Uh, the date is September 14, 2021, and I'm here located in my shop, 2020 Wentworth Street West in Whitby, Ontario. Uh, today, I will be doing an examination on in-flight failure on this 582 engine. This uh, engine came with a logbook and according to the logbook and the questioning uh, that I did with the owner of the uh, aircraft, the rotary oil was changed at 82.3 hours and that was done according to him per the Rotax uh, in, uh, manual that he used for the maintenance. The uh, engine out occurred at 83.0 hours, so 0.7 hours later, according to the log books. When I questioned him about uh, how the procedure he used to change the oil, how he specifically how he refilled the oil, he had um, done it according to the maintenance uh, instructions uh, from the Rotax manual that he was using. Uh, when uh, I asked him about refilling it, he stated that he had drained it and showed me that it was the lowest point in the system that he drained it from. Uh, this being an inverted engine uh, installation on a Challenger and then, I, and then I asked him about how did you refill it. He filled it the rotary valve uh, reservoir uh, and it went down a little bit a teeny bit I guess after time and then he'd run it um, and fully warmed up the engine and topped it off um, with very, very little. And uh, then he went and uh, flying and uh, not sure if he mentioned if he did some circuits, but at any rate, the uh, 0.7 hours later, the engine stopped. I had asked, did you take out the plug that leads into the rotary case to bleed the oil, excuse me, bleed the air from it so the oil can completely fill the cavity and that procedure was not done. And again, he said, I followed the procedure in the manual and stated that it showed that you just filled it and it um, self bled from his understanding. Uh, of course, when the engine is inverted, that's not the case. So uh, I suspect that we'll find the biggest problem we're going to find will be uh, failure in the rotary valve uh, brass gear. Um, see how late the timing is on the rotary plate or if the rotary plate even turns anymore. I will be completely dismantling the engine. I want to see the, the whole uh, engine, of course, examine all the parts. The, the engine will be completely dismantled and we'll be able to see the exact cause of what made the engine stop in flight and um, then we'll determine what uh, components we need to replace before we can put it back into service. Upon receipt of this engine, as is the case with all engines, it was photographed from all angles and as you can see all of the external components uh, have been removed. Uh, nothing extraordinary was found with any of those components whatsoever. And because we suspect a rotary issue, let's go right away first off and check out the rotary valve. Is the timing late or does it turn at all? I have marked it with the marker so we can see it easier on the camera. And let's rotate the uh, crankshaft and we see no movement whatsoever. So the uh, failure was definitely in the rotary gear case that drives the rotary valve to rotate. So when the rotation of the rotary valve stopped, that is exactly when it had its in-flight engine stoppage. I observed when I checked the engine in that the rotary valve oil reservoir was noticeably low and asked if any had been removed. The owner stated that it had not been. Uh, he had noticed that the level had gone down after handling the engine and moving it around. 
Uh, so I've got a, a clean graduated container. So let's find out. And very little has come out of the reservoir. Very little is, uh, is escaping at this point in time. So I would say that the amount of oil that we have removed is how much it was filled from unless it started to degrade the seals beside the uh, brass gear from particulate during that time and it started to actually ingest it into either cylinder. So let's remove the ignition coil plate assembly it is just in a spot where it's probably bald on teeth so there's some resistance there and there so it likely has well at least one or a lot more teeth that are probably not engaging at all I'm going to lift the plate off and the plate does not want to lift off so I'm going to leave it and take the plate off um, after I split the case. The combustion chamber looks quite nice actually. Let's visually examine the cylinders to see if there's any scoring or seizure present. This is the PTO exhaust side. It looks absolutely perfectly normal. Uh, the exhaust side of the mag end again perfectly normal what I would expect to see let's turn the engine rotate the engine and uh, now we have on this side is now the PTO side uh, intake side looks perfectly normal uh, mag side over here uh, intake side looks perfectly normal the uh, flame travel carbon patterns on top of the pistons is uh, consistent with the history of a good running engine so upon visual examination of the pistons this is the PTO piston it looks quite normal. So this will be the uh, mag piston. It looks quite normal. And there's perhaps some very light striations. Not sure if they'll show up on the camera or not. So as we can see, there is the brass gear teeth that have completely separated it and attached themselves onto the crankshaft um, gear. It looks quite uh, blue in color. Now we can see the extent. So very little remnants of the uh, teeth left. As you can see by the serviceable gear that I have placed beside, just for comparison to see how much has actually gone off of that, it is just literally melted due to lack of uh, lubrication. In examining the official Rotax line maintenance manual, which I believe is the manual that the owner of this aircraft referred to for his procedure on how to change the rotary valve oil. This is uh, the latest version that I have and the instruction is renewing of the rotary valve lubrication oil. It says to change the oil the following steps are necessary. Uh, drain the oil completely for complete emptying, the engine must be inclined. Number two, afterwards refill the oil tank, allow some time for settling, which he did. Fill the tank 
to max mark after a short trial run to verify the oil level again, which he's reported to me that he did. There is no reference in here to uh, allow him to know the proper procedure on how to especially refill the system and bleed the air out on an inverted installation, which is what is on uh, the engine installation on his Challenger aircraft. Uh, it, it, I would have thought that it needs to have or should have had uh, either the instruction in here or it should have referenced to uh, the heavy maintenance manual or the installation manual uh, for the correct information for his engine installation. So uh, although he uh, followed the, uh, the Rotax, uh, official Rotax document, uh, this is this is what happened because it was the procedure for the engine in the upright position where the spark plugs face straight up and again on a Challenger the engine is inverted. My conclusions on the uh, in-flight failure or sudden engine stoppage of this 582 Rotax engine serial number 7949393 was that the rotary valve ceased its operation due to its drive system failure. The drive system failure, the brass gear and the related components failed due to lack of lubrication and subsequent overheating as the chamber that surrounds the gear and the crankcase was filled with air instead of the necessary lubricant uh, 